Hey there anybody who's uh, listening to this. This kind of video is going to be a little different compared to some of my other uh, types of videos. It's not going to be a tutorial. Uh, it's not going to be a recommendation or analysis or anything like that. It's just going to be me talking for a little bit about art and my own experiences. This video is really being made by me, for me. I'm kind of just making this. Uh, I mean the whole channel is... I mean the whole channel, but I feel this video series in particular is mainly just a document for me to, to pretty much say what I think about my art right now uh, as it's developing. On the screen right now you can see some portraits and stuff I made. Uh, this is some fan art portraits that I'm making for a video I'm making later on the game Hello Charlotte. So if you recognise any of the characters then I'm glad because that means I've done an okay job I guess at representing in a new style uh, what these characters look like in my eyes. Before I get into what I wanted to talk about in the video, I'll quickly comment on some of the characters I've drawn here. I drew, I drew three of the residents from Charlotte's house in my own style. Uh, to mixed degrees of success I feel. No, the reason I say uh, to various degrees of success is because I feel I represented some characters a little bit better than others. I feel, for example, Bennett, who is the first one I drew here on the far right. I think he's drawn, um, I think I didn't really capture his kind of like childlike look. I think, uh, I think he looks, I think he looks in my image to be kind of like an amalgam, like a mix of a lot of different things. I think his head shape is a little too adult. While his hair doesn't really feel as authentic as it does in his real life in the in-game sprite. I also feel his colours are a little bit too desaturated. I think another pass at him trying to make him look a bit more childish would have worked for me better. Overall though, it, it does the job I guess, and it's what I'll be using. Iden in the middle here, I feel, uh, I feel I probably did the best job with. I'm quite happy about how the face in particular turned out. Uh, the colours could have gone better, but at the same time, I was trying to emulate the colours used in the real game. So I was a little bit limited there anyway. Overall, I'm happy with how his face and expression turned out. I could have. I think. I feel I could have drawn the staghorns a little bit more realistically. I went for how they kind of look in game, in the in-game sprite, and I think that kind of ruins the kind of feel of the image. I think it would have been better if I'd have gone for like, if I'd have gone for way more realistic kind of stag ears as opposed to like the in-game ones. Other than that, I'm fairly happy with it. I think he's probably the most solid out of the rest of them. As for Huxley on the far left, I think he's fine. I think he's fine in terms of like the way he looks and that. He, like the kind of look I gave him here kind of fits what he does look like in game. I think that while it does look similar to what the real game one looks like, I think I think the tone, I think the tone's a little bit off than it should be. I feel with uh, with Aiden, I got the tone of his kind of character just right and the look, uh, and I, I just feel I got the look right with him. Whereas with Huxley, and Bennett as well, the 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 kind of feel of those characters were kind of lost, and I I didn't really capture them very well. That being said, though, I think I did get enough of him right that it doesn't warrant a redraw or anything too drastic to change, it's kind of just like... I feel like it would have been better for me to, to go for the, the gas mask one, just because then I, would, I wouldn't have to worry about the face, and the character is just like recognisable from that. Uh, the issue with that being though that uh, Huxley only really wears the gas mask in the first Hello Charlotte game, and I wanted to make these images for my video on that I'm going to be making Hello Charlotte later, that I'm going to be developing in the next couple of weeks, like a big analysis video on it, and uh, I didn't really have time to kind of faff around. And uh, if I'm gonna have this, if I'm gonna have this image of Huxley show up every now and then in the video, I want it to be kind of like an image of him that's kind of best represents him in all the games, which is probably him with his mask off, since that's how he appears for two out of the three games. So all I really need to say is I'm I'm fairly ashamed about how Bennett turned out. Iden I'm happy with. Huxley could have gone better, but he's fine I suppose. And for anyone who does like Hello Charlotte and recognises the characters on screen. Then while you don't have to subscribe, I would recommend keeping an eye on my channel because I'm going to have a really long analysis video on Hello Charlotte, on kind of all aspects of that game, uh, up on my channel in the next few weeks, so I hope you can look forward to that. So the topic of the video I really wanted to get into was uh, the subject of fan art, and the kind of cons and pros of fan art. Something I've been thinking a lot recently while being at uni and producing my own like original work for animation projects and stuff is kind of the, it's kind of if it's really good or like worth it to do fan art. Because before I started really going to uni, I sort of like didn't really do many of my own projects or my own characters. I had my own characters and stuff, but I never really like drew them all the time or anything like that, or like fought up like fully rounded stories with them or just like anything like that. I didn't really do it. But now I've been put in a position where I kind of have to, and I really enjoy it. But at the same time, there's this factor of like, does anyone care about it but me? And if not, then can I really like push it to the point where I can make you care about these characters? Which is a real big concern for me because I feel like, I feel like for an artist that kind of wants to be noticed in a community, it almost feels like it's uh, it's it, you only really should be doing fan art because otherwise no one's really going to notice you. I feel like that's the train of thought, and that the easiest way to kind of get recognition and the kind of support that you kind of need as an artist 
especially like a, a especially for like young artists and people who are like and for people who like don't have for example friends in the real world that do art that can kind of give them that moral support i feel like fan art is the best way to get it which i think fair enough uh, realistically if you do your own art if you do your, like your own original art all the time without kind of putting yourself out there too much then you're not really going to get anywhere whereas i feel with fan art you've kind of got a safety net not only producing a piece of work that can go to sell on, for example, cons and stuff, but also works as a piece that can help promote you. Because there will always be fans of these things that you draw fan art for. Even just like, even minor things that you feel like no one even knows about, uh, you can draw fan art of it and people will like, and some people will set it as their phone screensaver and stuff, you know, it's just inevitable. Like it doesn't even concern like skill of art, as long as you've made a drawing, as long as you've made a piece of fan art, no matter like the skill level of the piece, Someone will always like it, even if you think no one ever sees it, they might just like it and then not like it on a website, for example like Tumblr. They might just see it on the feed and kind of like, give a nod and kind of smile about it, but maybe not reblog it or like it. I'm getting a little bit off topic here, kind of with my rambling, but I think something that I've thought about quite a lot and think that I might be doing in the future to kind of see how it goes for me, is I think I might kind of try and make my own original characters, or work on kind of original projects and stories in the form of some other mediums. And um, maybe put them out there alongside fan art. I haven't really done a lot of fan art outside of this for like a very long time. I think it's because I've been in a drawing rut these last couple weeks, but I think while I'll probably still be making fan art in the future, I think I might just kind of make a focus of my work, original characters for, for, a, for a select amount of time, just to see how it goes for me. And I might make a follow-up video to this where I talk about the results of that, I guess, mini experiment. On an interesting note, I, I, know of a lot of, I know of a lot of art teachers and stuff that tell you that you really shouldn't be doing fan art. And while I feel it's not really supportive for an artist that kind of wants to thrive on the internet, uh, as an internet artist, you're going to want to draw fan art, just because it, just uh, just for the pure sake of merch alone, it just helps sell yourself as an artist as well as your work. If you go to a con with, like, if you go to a con with just your original work, you're just not going to be able to sell as much unless you have a killer kill poster on your roster. I think the train of thought behind a lot of people telling people to do this is that, is that when you don't have a, a predetermined character or setting, you kind of have to make your own, and then that leads you into a load of trouble. It, it, it gets you out of your comfort zone and you have to try out a lot more things, which is always good for artists, really. If you don't have a character to draw, then you have to design your own, which means you then have to learn how to design a good character that not only you like, but the public likes, and you might want to try different variations of it, which can give you some basic character design skills for the future. Or if you have a character, but you don't have a setting, then you then have to make that, which means if you want to draw a setting, you then have to learn a bit of perspective. It's just a really good learning experience that means you don't have to copy as much from other things, which I think super benefits people, but at the same time is really nerve wracking for people who are unprepared or are not willing to take the dive just yet. Overall, I have really complicated emotions currently about it. While I do understand that fundamentally, uh, fan art is a crutch, I do, think it's, I do think it's one that can work both ways, as opposed to you just leaning on it. I think it's a crutch that can help you out with a lot of different things, and I, I think overall it's useful, and that you should never not do fan art, but that perhaps you should try making more original work every now and then as well, just to get yourself out of your comfort zone. I'm going to be trying it for the next couple of weeks, uh, especially with my FMP coming up, so I'm going to be doing that, where I kind of have to design original characters and original settings, and uh, the results of which I'll probably document in another draw vlog in the future. Uh, this was pretty much just me rambling into a microphone about fan art for a couple minutes, so I hope if anyone did get through all of this that you might have at least taken something from it, and if not, then I sincerely apologise for wasting your time. And this video series, I guess, might not be for you. But for anyone else who's interested in, I guess, my own thoughts on my progression as an artist, then I guess I'll keep making these, if not for you, then myself. Thanks very much for listening if you did stick to the end, though. And I hope you can enjoy any other videos that are on my channel as well.